Today I thought I would share my experience of the Alphafly and Vaporfly after a year of use and some 800 kilometers of running in both of these shoes. Oh no, no milk. Damn it! So today is a Tuesday which means a double run day for me. Um, I'm up nice and early. I find that if I start my double run days as early as possible, um, it just makes that second run later a little bit easier. So yeah, this morning I'm going to be off to the gym, get about uh, 14 kilometers of easy running this morning. Tonight's workout is a sort of threshold sandwich workout, so I think it's 2k uh, at threshold on the track, followed by 12 times 200 meters, and then at the end another 2 K threshold and that's a workout set by my club Chelmsford AC so I'll be down at the track tonight I've just got my morning coffee a um, bit of porridge and I just had my turmeric zuki to help with that um, recovery for those of you who've been following along this is now week f the start of week four of my six week training block for this sub 32 minute uh, 10k attempt. Yeah, it's been going pretty well with training. I'm starting to feel quite pretty fit and I actually got race entry into a local 10k. There was sort of um, a waiting list so I just chucked my name in the on the waiting list to see if there was any places available um, and yeah, less than a week before the race is meant to go ahead I got an email saying there's a place open so I've accepted that. I'm going to be racing on Sunday. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my training. We're into week four. Everything's going well. Um, everything apart from a little tumble, I had a fall on Sunday night. Um, I was out for my long run and I tripped on a tree root and bashed my knee and hip quite quite badly. Um, but it was just like a bruising, a little bit of soreness. But other than that, all things, uh, all systems go. This week is a 130 kilometer running week, so it's my peak volume week before I start the slow taper in the two week sort of taper into this 10k race. Um, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying following along. Today we're going to be talking about two shoes that I've actually had for now. It just dawned on me that I've had them for over a year. So I thought I'd talk you through how I've used the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly after a year of use. So I just finished on the treadmill, 14 kilometers easy run this morning, uh, managed to get it done in just, um, I think it was just about an hour's time. I was trying to get the 14 kilometers done in an hour, so the last two kilometers I had to speed up a little bit, um, but yeah, an easy run nonetheless. Um, I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts, which is called Inside Running. It's about um, a, a bunch of Australian runners. They're pretty, pretty good. So I think some of them may be elite, sub elite. Um, they like to talk about shoes, their training. Um, they were talking about discipline today, um, which kind of links back into treadmill running. Um, I got a message on Instagram being like, how do you motivate yourself to run on the treadmill for so long? Um, I find it really boring. I can't do it for more than 10 minutes. Um, and the reality is this treadmill running is really boring. There's no sort of um, way of making it any easier. I like to listen to podcasts or watch YouTube videos um, while I'm doing it. It sort of takes my mind off it. But um, yeah, it links back to something they were talking about on the podcast, which is discipline. So if you've got a 14 kilometer run, uh, easy run like I did on my plan, making sure that you run that easy, you don't uh, get halfway through and think, oh, I'm feeling good and just absolutely hammer it. Um, it's all about having that discipline with your training um, so that when it comes to race day, you can have discipline um, in your race. So yes, that's my sort of takeaway from the treadmill work I like to do. It teaches me self-discipline. I know that the only thing that's stopping me from getting the work done is if I step off the treadmill. Um, but if I can get to the treadmill, press go, um, well, yeah, 10 times out of 10, I get the work done, uh, leave the gym feeling good. Um, so, yeah, 
that would be my sort of takeaway from today's little 14k easy run this morning is to have discipline in your training to have discipline when it comes to race day to be able to yeah, nail your splits so i'm back from the gym and i've managed to dig out my Alpha Fly and Vapor Fly that I've had for over a year now. Um, so I brought both these shoes in September 2020. The date of this video is now November 2021. So I've had them for well over a year now. I've run over 800 kilometers in both these shoes. I believe 830 odd in the um, Alpha Fly and about just over 800 in the Vapor Fly. So both of these shoes have had a lot of wear and tear over the over the year. Um, I've been using them in my training. I've chosen to train in carbon plated racing shoes. I know a lot of people have varying opinions about whether you should um, train in carbon plated racing shoes, but I've chosen to in the last year of my training and I've not had any injuries or um, any issues with these shoes, touch wood, um, but yeah. Let me know in the comments, is, is training in carbon plated shoes something you now do um, or do you steer clear of it and for, for what reasons? Let's start off with why I originally brought these shoes. Um, I brought them back in September 2020. Nike had a bit of a discount on, I think it was probably like 20% off or it could have been up to 30% off, something like that. But there was a good deal on at the time um, and I'd been working hard so I thought I'd treat myself to a pair of carbon plated racing shoes. So I didn't know which ones were better. Um, which one's gonna be more suited to me. So I ended up buying both with the intention to send one of them back. Um, but here they are a year later, n neither of them got sent back. Um, I raced in both of these shoes and yeah, they've become an integral part of my of my training runs. So let's start off first with the Vaporfly. Um, I first raced in this for a 5K. It was my first um, attempt at a sub 16 5k i believe i ran 1604 in the first um race in these shoes so i didn't quite hit my 16 minute target um and that was way back in i think january 2021 yeah so almost a good eight months ago um then with the alpha fly my first race in this shoe was a 10k time trial it was during the lockdown period so it was with my athletics club at the time colchester harriers and i actually ran my 10k pb in this shoe a 32 minutes 48 i believe on the day um, but it was a time trial so yeah measured on my watch i don't count it as an official pb my official pb sits at um 32 minutes 53 which i did run in this shoe at the coastal uh, folkestone coastal 10k so yeah, that's a little bit about how I've raced in these shoes um, and how I used them at the start of their life in my sort of running journey, if you like. So yeah, first racing shoes, but after they, I'd raced in them a few times, they get a bit worn out and I'm like, oh, I might as well use them in sessions. So I started using them in, in my training, um, but they had slightly different uses or have had slightly different uses over the um over the year because of their slightly different properties. So the Alpha Fly for me is a much more cushioned shoe, um, even though the stack height in these shoes is, I believe, fairly similar. Um, the Alpha Fly has a less of an aggressive um, millimeter drop, so it only has a four millimeter drop, where I believe the Vapor Fly has an eight or nine millimeter drop. So basically what that means is a lot more foam in this um, toe box area and for me that is that is meant that it just protects my legs a lot more than say the vapor fly does where it, where it's there's a bit less foam in the toe box so the alpha fly for me is definitely more cushioned whereas the vapor fly is actually a more responsive shoe and a shoe that i feel that i can run at faster top speeds so for 5k this is my go-to shoe whereas anything above 10k um, I've raced 10Ks in both these shoes, but anything above 10K I would probably go for the Alpha Fly. One more difference to note about these shoes that I found was the comfort. So the Vapor Fly is a much, much more comfortable shoe. Um, I had absolutely no issues with this shoe throughout its year of use, whereas the Alpha Fly, on the other hand, is a bit more of an acquired taste in terms of fit. Um, this upper is not quite as locked down as this um, on the vapor fly and also this it's very very narrow in the arch area of this shoe um, and i believe it's got quite a high arch so in the first probably two months of wearing this shoe is actually getting blisters underneath my foot i believe it was on only on the left side um I, interestingly but yeah on the left side i had blisters from the high arch in the shoe whereas the vapor fly 
um, had absolutely no issues, much more comfortable. So moving on to the uses of these shoes, how have I used them over the last year in my training? Um, yes, start with the Alpha Fly. This has become my go-to long run shoe. Um, yes, it's 260 pounds, very expensive. Um, and I know people are saying, how can you use that as your long run shoe? Um, yeah, it's a waste of money, all that, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, um, that's what I've used this shoe for. Oh, there's a bit of a stone in here. The, the midsole on it is starting to break down quite a bit. Um, yeah, just picked out a bit of a bit of grit there. This area here is really starting to wear down quite a lot. Um, but yeah, it's become an ideal long run shoe for me. Um, it seems to protect my legs over those longer distances, but also maintain that sort of speed. So in this shoe, I can sort of pick a pace fast pace around say like 335 340 per kilometer and i can sort of dial into that speed and sort of maintain it over a, over a long run um and it's been excellent i can sort of do a long run say 30 kilometer long run on a sunday and i wake up on a monday morning and my legs sort of feel not fresh but a lot less beaten up than they would be say if i'd run in a diff in another shoe um so yeah this shoe almost has healing powers when it comes to protecting your legs and and helping you recover quicker from those long runs i've also used it for my interval work um but sort of my longer interval work i'll talk about the vapor fly in just a second um but anything sort of threshold so 10 minute reps so say for example a three times 10 minute session i would go for the alpha fly or a 45 minute tempo again i would pick the alpha fly Moving on to the Vaporfly, I use this shoe for my track sessions, so all my intervals that are slightly shorter and focus more on speed. This is the shoe that I feel that I can run at a faster top speed in, so I can run a faster kilometre in the Vaporfly than I could the Alpha Fly. Um, so yeah, I've used it for all my track workouts um, for the last year. It's held up pretty well. Um, in terms of the wear and tear, it's a bit more... Um, the wear and tear is a bit more spread out across this shoe, so there's no real like high impact areas. This the Zoom X has seem seems to have held up pretty well. Um, again, similar with the Alpha Fly, it started to break down here and this this area here of of more um, dense rubber has started to come away from the Zoom X. Um, but yeah, it's held up pretty well. So yeah, this is my go-to interval shoe, whereas the Alpha Fly is more my long run shoe. And finally, I thought I'd wrap this video up with, if I could only pick one of these shoes, which would I pick? Um, so for the first nine months of having both of these shoes in my sort of training, my shoe rotation, if you like, I would have said the Vaporfly. Interestingly, after a year, I would pick the Alpha Fly. If I could only have one of these shoes, um, it would be the Alpha Fly, just because of that sort of ability to keep my legs fresh throughout my training. I can also race in this shoe. I'd be more than happy to run 5Ks in this shoe. For the longer stuff, it is much, much more superior than the Vapor Fly. I just feel more efficient when it comes to um, running at higher speeds in the Alpha Fly than I do the Vapor Fly. Um, the reason why I initially liked the Vapor Fly more. Um, so in, in the first few months of use was because it is that little bit more comfortable, it feels a little bit more snappy, um, and I feel like I can surge better in this shoe in races, but I can pretty much do everything that I can do in the Vaporfly, in the Alpha Fly. but the Alpha Fly just has that sort of long run um, property, so if I'm looking to do more half marathons, marathons in the future, this will probably be my go-to shoe. Obviously shoes are gonna change in the future, um, I'm looking forward to the Alpha Fly 2 coming out. But yeah, that's a little bit about how I've used the Alpha Fly and Vapor Fly after a year of running some 800 kilometers in both shoes. Hope you enjoyed that insight into the last yeah, year of running in the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly for me. Um, hopefully it's helped you with your decision if, you've, if you're yet to pick between the two. Um, for me, I would pick the Alpha Fly, but I know for a lot of people, they would pick the Vapor Fly. If you can afford to, pick up both. Um, give, give both of them a try. Looking forward to that Alpha Fly 2 coming out because I think that could fix some of the arch problems that a lot of people had with the, the version 1. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, aspire to run and run to inspire, and we'll see you with another one soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>